chapter 18, Grain as Big as a Hen's Egg. This story, this short story by famous Russian author Leo Tolstoy was written in 1886. It takes the form of a parable or allegory that is a work in which the characters and events usually represent other things and symbolically express a deeper, often moral meaning. The message here is about being content with one's lot in life. Now over here, there are two new words. It's in the form of a parable or an allegory. Now what is a parable? A parable is a short story. It's a simple story, but it has a moral attached to it. Okay. Similarly, an allegory also is a short story or it's a poem or it can even be a picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. So through this story, there is a moral behind it, what the writer is trying to tell us, Leo Tolstoy. And what is the message? The message of the story is to be content with one's lot in life. That means to be content with what you have. Now we will read the story. One day, some children found in a ravine a thing shaped like a grain of corn with a groove down the middle but as large as a hen's egg. A traveler passing by saw the thing, bought it from the children for a penny and taking it to town, sold it to the king as a curiosity. Now who found these, this grain of, who found a thing? shaped like a grain of corn, children who were playing found it. Where did they find it? They found it in a ravine. A ravine is a deep valley with steep sides. So the children were playing there, they found it. And who found the children playing with it was a traveler. And he was fascinated with it. So he took it and he gave it to the king. He sold it to the king as a curiosity. A curiosity is something that is a strange thing. It's an un interesting and unusual object. So he sold it to the king. Now what did the king do with it? The king called together all his wise men and told them to find out what the thing was. The wise men pondered and pondered and could not make head or tail of it. One day when the thing was lying on a window sill, a hen flew in and pecked at it till she made a hole in it. Then everyone saw that it was a grain of corn. The wise men went to the king and said, it is a grain of corn. Now over here we see the king wanted to know what this strange object was. He did not know. So he, whom did he call? He called his wise men. And the wise men pondered. Pondered means to think deeply about something. So they were wondering what the strange object was. They could not find it. Till what happened, a hen came when it was lying on the windowsill and he pecked at the grain of, of at the object and they came to know that it was a grain of corn. So then these wise men went to the king and told him that it is a grain of corn. At this, the king was much surprised and he ordered the learned men to find out when and where such corn had grown. The learned men pondered again and searched in their books, but could not find nothing about it. Now the wise men did not know what it was, so the king called for the learned men. Now who are learned men? Learned men are knowledgeable people. Okay? They gain their knowledge through the reading of books. They are scholars. So the king called for them. So they went and they read up all the books, but they could not find out what the object was. So they returned to the king and said, we can give you no answer. There is nothing about it in our books. You will have to ask the peasants. Perhaps some of them may have heard from their fathers when and where grain grew to such a size. So they said, in our books, there is no information. 
So you ask a very old peasant. Now, a peasant is a farmer or an agricultural worker. So you call for them and you ask them if they have grown any such corn. Okay. So the king gave orders that some very old peasant should be bought before him. His servants found such a man and bought him, brought him to the king. Old and bent, ashy, pale and toothless, he just managed with the help of two crutches to totter into the king's court. So the king gave orders that a very old farmer, a peasant, be bought to him. And when this peasant came, what is his description? He was very, very old and bent. Bent means his back was bent. You see a hunchback? He had a hunchback. Okay. He was ashy pale. That means his skin was not healthy. It was a color of ash that is gray. And he was toothless. Toothless means all his teeth had fallen off. He just managed with the help of two crutches to totter into the king's court. So he could not even walk well. He had to walk with the help of two crutches. And he came tottering into the king's presence. To totter means to move in an unsteady manner. Okay. You see when old people walk, they use a walking stick and they totter because they are not steady on their feet. So this old man also was not steady on his feet. The king showed him the grave, but the old man could hardly see it. He took it, however, and felt it with his hands. The king questioned him, Can you tell us, old man, where such grain as this grew? Have you ever bought such corn or, owned such, or sown such in your fields? So when the king spoke to the old man, what do we see? The old man could not see clearly. So what did he do? He took the object and he felt it with his hands. He felt the shape with his hands. And the king asked him, had he ever seen such a grain? Or did he ever grow such a grain? Okay. So what did the old man say? The old man was so deaf. Deaf means unable to hear clearly. The old man was so deaf that he could hardly hear what the king said. And only understood with great difficulty. No, he answered at last. I never sowed nor reaped any like it in my fields. Nor did I ever buy any such. When we bought corn, the grains were always as small as they are now. But you might ask my father. He may have heard where such grain grew. So in response to the king's question, what does he do? What does he answer? He said, I never grew any corn like this. But you may ask my father. He may have heard where such grain grew. So this old man is asking the king to call his father. So the king sent for the old man's father and he was found and brought before the king. He came walking with one crutch. The king showed him the grain and the old peasant, who was still able to see, took a good look at it. The king asked him, Can you tell us, old man, where corn like this used to grow? Have you ever bought any like it or sown any in your fields? So when the first old man's father came, though he was older than his son, he could see better than his son. He could walk better than his son. He had only one crutch. Okay. And he could still see better than his son. So when the king asked him, have you, have you seen such corn? And have you ever bought it? Or do you, were you growing this type of corn? What did he answer? He said, though the old man was rather hard of hearing. Hard of hearing means, again, slightly deaf. Not fully deaf, but slightly deaf. He was unable to hear clearly. Though the old man was rather hard of hearing, he still heard better than his son had done. No, he said, I never sowed nor reaped any grain like this in my field. As for buying, I never bought any. For in my time, 
money was not yet in use. Everyone grew his own corn. And when there was any need, we shared with one another. I do not know where corn like this grew. Ours was larger and yielded more flour than present day grain. But I never saw any like this. I have, however, heard my father say that in his time, the grain grew larger and yielded more flour than ours. You had better ask him. So what did the old man reply to the question of the king? He said, I never bought anything because in my time there was no concept of money. If we needed something, we went and asked for our neighbors, from our neighbors. We shared with our neighbors. We never bought anything from each other. Okay? This grain of corn is big. But in our time, corn was, was bigger than the present day corn. But not so big. So maybe you should ask my father, okay? Because I have heard my father saying that in his time, the grain of corn grew bigger. So what did the king do? The king sent for the old man's father. So the king sent for this old man's father. They found him too and bought him before the king. He entered walking easily and without crutches. His sight was clear. His hearing good and he spoke distinctly. Distinctly means clearly. The king showed him the grain and the old grandfather looked at it and turned it about in his hand. Now this old man, father when he came, now this is the grandfather of the first old man. Now he can walk better, he can see better, he can speak better than his son and his grandson. He is more healthy than them though he is the oldest among them. Okay? Now why is this so? We will see later in the story. So, the king showed him the grain and the old grandfather looked at it and turned it about in his hand. It is long since I saw such a fine grain, he said. And he bit a piece off and tasted it. It's the very same kind, he added. So the grandfather, he recognized this grain of corn. Okay, And because he recognized it, he bit it to see if it tasted the same. And yes, it was the same. So what did the king ask him? The king asked, Tell me, grandfather, said the king, when and where was such corn grown? Have you ever bought any like it or sowed any in your fields? The old man replied, Corn like this used to grow everywhere in my time. I lived on corn like this in my young days and fed others on it. It was grain like this that we used to sow, reap and thrash. So when the king asked him, he said, yes, I used to grow such corn in my field and I used to feed other people with that. I used to sow. Sow means to put grain in the ground so that it becomes a plant. Reap means to cut the grain. When it becomes ripe, to cut the grain is called reap. And thrash means after you have cut the corn, the grains for the corn cob from the grain, what do you have to do? You have to hit it on the ground to separate the grains from the plant. That is called thresh. Okay? The king asked, tell me grandfather, did you buy it anywhere or did you grow it all yourself? The old man smiled. In my time, he answered, no one ever thought of such a thing as such a sin as buying or selling bread. We knew nothing of money. Each man had corn enough of his own. So now what's the difference between this grandfather and his son? Now his son never knew the use of money. This grandfather also never knew the use of money. He called it a sin to use money. He said, everybody grew their own corn. Nobody asked others. We did not borrow from anyone else. We grew our own stuff. We used our hard labor. Okay? 
and each man had corn of his own. So what does the king ask him? He asked him, then tell me, grandfather, asked the king, where was your field? Where did you grow corn like this? The grandfather answered, my field was God's earth. Wherever I ploughed, there was my field. Land was free. It was a thing no man called his own. Labor was the only thing men called their own. So what does the grandfather reply? He said, yes, I used to grow this corn. And when the king asked him, where was your field? He said, the full earth was my field. Wherever I wished, I could go and grow the corn. Okay. The land was free. The only thing that they called their own was their labor. That means only their hard work, their hard physical work of reaping and sowing and threshing. That was the only thing they called their own. Answer two more questions, said the king. The first is, why did the earth bear such grain then and has ceased to do so now? So the king is very curious. He wants to find out why the earth is not giving such big grains of corn. So what does he do? He asks the grandfather. And the second question he asked him, why your grandson walks with two crutches, your son with one, and you yourself with none? Your eyes are bright, your teeth sound, your speech clear, and pleasant to the ear. How have these things come about? So in other words, the second question the king is asking him is why is the grandfather who is the oldest in such good health compared to his son and his grandson? So what did the old man answer? The old man answered, these things are so because men have ceased to live by their own labor. That means men have ceased, means stopped. Men have stopped to work. What do they do? They depend on others to do their work. They have taken to depending on the labor of others. In olden time, men lived according to God's law. They had what was their own and coveted not what others had produced. So he's saying, we are in good health because we worked for whatever we wanted. Okay. We never, we never depended on others to work for us. That's why we are in good health. And we lived according to God's law. Now, what was God's law in the olden time? The God's, God's law in the olden time was they did not covet what others had. That means if the neighbor grew a lot of corn, he grew whatever he wanted for himself. The person who was a neighbor did not feel envious of the other person. Oh, my neighbor is growing so much and I have only so little. That concept was not there. Okay. Each one grew what he needed. So they were not greedy people. Okay. So these, this is what the old man answered. So what is the moral of the story over here? The moral of the story over here is that people nowadays are lazy. They want others to do their work. They are greedy. They covet what is not theirs. Whereas in olden days, people used to be satisfied. So the moral of the story here is you have to be content with one's lot in life. And you have to share with others. So this is the moral of the story. Okay.